going to talk about mapping for equity on OpenStreetMap. Uh, my name is Jazzy. I use she, her pronouns. Um, and this is our agenda today. I'll tell you about uh, Beta NYC, which is the nonprofit that I work for, our history with OpenStreetMap, and kind of the breakdown of the what, when, where, why, and how of this project and what's next. Um, uh, this is my team. Uh, we are a small but mighty team. We have four full-time staff, three apprentices. One of the full-time staff is Z over here who runs the lab um, and teaches me so much about maps as well. Um, but two associates and six civic innovation fellows who are highlighted in yellow and they piloted this project. Um, and they just recently graduated from the program, which is so cool. Um, all right random plug, but we're hiring a CTO. Um, so if after this presentation, you're like, wow, out of like the hundred panels that I saw today, I kind of like what that person said, and I'm interested in joining that team. Come check it out. Um, awesome. So what do we do? Uh, at Beta NYC, we're a civic tech nonprofit that's dedicated to improving the lives of New Yorkers through civic technology, design, and open data. And these three buckets are how we achieve our mission. So the first bucket is the fellowship, which I direct. Um, we partner with CUNY and we teach CUNY students a boot camp of data analysis, civics, data visualization, mapping um, in the fall. So in the spring, they can work on real life projects with real stakeholders. And the goal is for them to be the next generation of civic technologists. Um, as we know, resources to um, education aren't always accessible, so this is our way to make it more accessible. Uh, the second bucket, civic data services for NYC communities, means that we have a community help desk, which Z runs. Um, government offices, community organizations can submit a ticket on anything open data, or if they need support with data analysis, we'll help them. Um, and it's a collaborative process, and it's been really awesome. And then the third bucket is public data literacy programming. Um, we hold, for example, a program called Open Data Ambassadors, where teachers um, train the public on how to use NYC open data. Um, and it's so cool to see who comes out and learns about filtering, grouping, et cetera. So that's us. All right. So to get started with um, understanding how we utilize OpenStreetMap, you need to know a little bit more about our fellowship. Um, we're, we just finished the ninth cohort of fellows um, and historically they have worked with um, community boards or community districts. Does anyone here know what a community board is? Yes, you wanna say? Like the smallest unit of government in New York City. That's great. Yes, thank you. Um, so that's historically what they've done. Um, and that's where our journey starts. So fellows were working closely with community boards. Um, the district manager is kind of like the lead of a community board. And this district manager was kind of sharing a grievance, being like, ah, I bought this fancy computer, um, can do all of these awesome things for planning to do surveys of sidewalks and curb cuts but no one's utilizing that. No one's utilizing it. And we're kind of like, all right, what's going on? Um, so my team asked, uh, like, when can folks actually use this computer? And he was like, um, from the hours of 8.30 to 5. Most folks are working. Um, when can they train and access this data, right? Um, and it's not open on the weekends. So it, it's an interesting start to our journey where I like to make this analogy of um, similar to like putting the horse before the cart, putting the technology before the people. Sometimes we think like, oh, if we just put this tool out there, it'll solve our problems without thinking about how it's going to be integrated to work for people. So that's where we started in thinking about access to data. Um, the next stop in our journey was uh, discovering access map. Um, maybe most of you are familiar with it, but it's this super cool tool where, as you can see in all of the blocks represented here, you can see um, steepness and elevation um, data. And it's just so thoughtful in thinking about folks with different mobilities um, and how you get through the city. 
Uh, the next step in our journey was um, in 2019, NYC was embroiled in a curb cut lawsuit. Um, the settlement stems from a class action lawsuit filed against the city in 2014 over the state of its sidewalks and pedestrian curb ramps, which disability rights groups say are often unusable for wheel wheelchair users or the visually impaired. So they were fighting for essentially all curb cuts to be essential for accessible. And there's a long history of activism around this. So we were inspired by it. Um, so thinking about access map, thinking about the curb cut lawsuit, it led us to think, um, how can we act on this? So uh, we collaborated with community members to create an event called Mobility for All Sidewalk Mapping. And what was so cool is we got to know other people that were using open data, creating open data in ways that impacted their community that they lived in. It wasn't like some ab abstract things. Um, yeah, and then our next stop is um, post-pandemic. Uh, there was another event. This was, uh, is anyone here familiar with Open Data Week in NYC? <laughs> okay, okay. Um, it's a celebration of the open data law that passed in 2012, but this was the first open data week after the pandemic. And the same collaborators hosted this event where um, folks would map bike racks on open street map. Um, and a funny uh, element was that it was really cold. So um, mapping on your phone wasn't an option. So field papers were used. And what that created was kind of like this magical element of really engaging with the people that you're mapping with and like really engaging with the environment and maybe remembering um, what your handwriting looks like. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, and that's how we kind of came to this aha moment with utilizing OSM. Um, it's like, oh, we can be both doing civic engagement and data literacy when we utilize this tool and this furthers our mission. Um, Earth's calling who answers. Um, so at Beta NYC, our mission is to bridge the gap in data literacy and to use open data to make New Yorkers lives better. So OSM is such a match for us in that regard because it enables us to do better civic analysis. Um, I think the power for us in OSM is that so many perspectives can be represented, right? So if only a small subset of uh, people are creating a map, um, that's like a very limited perspective. Um, maps can have a focus on card collected data. Like what if we wanna create something that's more pedestrian focused? So who answers OpenStreetMap? Oh no, the formatting. Um, ah, it's okay. So that's how we get to this project, Mapping for Equity on OSM. Um, how it started is we trained our fellows in OSM and they mapped uh, in North Brooklyn on OpenStreetMap uh, and they mapped public amenities, so like benches, curb cuts, sidewalks, uh, water fountains, et cetera. And our ultimate goal is to build a comprehensive public space playbook that empowers community organizations and individuals to collect, verify, and analyze um, public realm data. That's how we want this to continue to live on. So we have this vision. Where do we start? We started with a list of amenities. Um, we told our fellows to focus on identifying the quantity, quality, and accessibility of each amenity. Um, we wanted to focus on public objects, free objects, um, and then ultimately when we're done with the district, we want to do an analysis seeing where there's um, a large amount of these objects and where there needs to be more of them. Um, awesome. Okay, second step. I guess this is a sidestep. You may be wondering, doesn't the city already have this data? And sorta, kinda, but do we have it? No. Um, here's an example. So here's a screenshot of NYC Open Data's sidewalk data. And you can see sidewalks are there, but not much else, right? And it's not regularly up and updated, so it's not accurate currently. If you wanna take a look at parks, um, they recently added this map, which is nice, um, that shows you, you can toggle single um, elements. So you can see playgrounds with public restrooms, 
uh, playgrounds that show wheelchair accessible playgrounds, but you can't toggle multiple. And also, um, for example, the term inclusive play elements, what does that look like? Where is it actually? So it doesn't show the data in granularity. So it's a start, but it's a start. <laughs> um, but anyway, getting back to our project, we also wanted to partner with people that have our same values. Um, so we partnered with North Brooklyn Parks Alliance and Jen Gutierrez's um, Council District 34. Um, NBPA, North Brooklyn Parks Alliance, is focused on creating equitable, accessible, and vibrant parks in open and an open space system in North Brooklyn. So that helped us narrow down um, types of places we want to go to. So we went to parks. Um, Jen Gutierrez is really interested in the IBZ and making it hospitable for workers there. So that helped us narrow down a location. Awesome. So again, park spaces. We also wanted to focus on public housing spaces to see um, how many amenities they have, uh, the quality of those amenities um, compared to other areas and the North and the North Brooklyn Industrial Business Zone. This is just a quick screenshot of um, the fellows impact on OSN and these are all the changes that they made. Um, cool. So what did it look like day to day? It's like we have this vision, we have these partners and objects. Uh, what did it look like? Um, fellows worked from February to May and this is a breakdown of how they use their time. It was mostly mapping in person and um, their workflow uh, was kind of like rinse and repeat where they would map in person and then they would import the data when they were working from home. And something that was really special with mapping in person is that they developed a community um, and they actually got to know each other. Uh, there were some really cold days where I was like, I have no idea how they're gonna get through this shift. And I think in combination of like actually enjoying each other's company and understanding the vision of the project, it kept them going, um, which is like really phenomenal. And um, something that's also really important is that they didn't need to know everything when they were out there. Uh, they could collect as much as they can in the terms that they know. And then when they come back home, they can research what appropriate tags they need to utilize. Ah, and this is such such a great segue from the first panel, but um, there really is magic in the mapping paper because uh, it's such an, it's like such a great point, easy point of access. Um, we created these in house and how it kind of works is, so we did uh, points, lines and polygons map and there would be like a number one, and you'd say, oh, number one point is a bench. I'm going to write all of the details there. And it correlates with the number one on my map. So that's how we did it. And I don't know. The archive is so cool. The fact that its material is so cool. We're in front of screens all the time. I think <laughs> we could bring it back a little, you know. Um, yeah. OK. All right. And some learning. Some learning moments were uh, when they encountered broken amenities or amenities in poor conditions were like, ah, we don't really know. Like, for example, they encountered fire hydrants with missing caps or like fire hydrants that were bent and we're like, it looks pretty broken to us, but we don't really know, right? So they mapped it on OpenStreetMap, but a learning uh, moment for us was that moving forward in future iterations, we're going to ask them to submit 311 requests. So now it's in the hands of the city to um, take care of these amenities. Um, awesome. And how else did we engage New Yorkers? Um, we've been holding workshops uh, to the public and to young people. Uh, we got a little bit of press at the Gothamist. Uh, we held this uh, Open Data Week event where folks could just shadow what fellows do. Um, and that was pretty cool. We also went to the High School of Environmental Studies and mapped a little bit of Central Park. Um, and we also went to uh, an after school coding group with mainly fourth graders and sixth graders. Um, and they they mapped on the street map. Um, yeah. So what's next? 
completion, analysis, and refinement. We want to complete uh, Council District 1. Um, we want to, to do more thorough analysis once we've mapped that entire district. And we want to refine our package so we can uh, continue to give it to other community members and they can, you know, do continue to do this work. Um, thank you so much. Thank you.